Hello there guys and welcome back to my channel for a pretty damn depressing video today. A pretty damn depressing video because David Luiz has joined Chelsea, has joined Arsenal, sorry, from Chelsea. I mean, at the time of recording, it's not actually been officially unveiled. But, you know, all the reliable, you know, journalists and whatever are talking about it. Medical has been done. You know, we know how much he's leaving for. We know, you know, for how long he's signed. And apparently he's taken pictures or already has taken pictures because I've already seen a picture of him in an Arsenal shirt. Um, even And he didn't look photoshopped to me. You know, I might be a bit silly here, but he didn't look photoshopped to me. So it is pretty damn depressing because I think a lot of us really did love Luis. You know, he was a great player, great leader, showed a lot of passion. And um, it's just got damn frustrating. And... Um, what I'm going to be talking about today is not just the situation, but how we actually got here and why exactly David Luiz is joining Arsenal from Chelsea. Why exactly this even happened. Um, you know, I was told about this. Um, I'm not going to be the guy that says, you know, take this for 100% guaranteed, you know, certain information. But I was told about this by what is said to be a pretty damn reliable source. And, um, you know, I'm just going to I'm just going to speak about it. You know, take it with a pinch of salt, of course. You know, I'm not going to be that guy. Um, but yeah, this is what we're here for. And of course, you know, if you are new here, please do subscribe to my channel. That would be massively appreciated. You know, we just did 5,500 subscribers. So keep it growing. Let's hit the 6K and let's just keep it growing from there onwards, of course. Um, and also drop a like on the video down below. And also, you know, leave your thoughts on the whole situation down in the comments section below. But now getting into it, it's frustrating. Like David Luiz was my second favorite Chelsea player in this current squad behind Ruben Loftus-Cheek. And now he's joining Arsenal. Arsenal, like, at least not Spurs, but it's Arsenal. Like, it's almost as bad. So, it's frustrating. Like, you know, when you heard David Luiz speaking on George Benson's, uh, George Benson's channel, um, the way he loves Chelsea, he's happy about the youth, and the way he spoke about Mason Mount, and even even with Frank Lampard. So, it is all, it is all an absolute mess. Like, you know, I met David Luiz yesterday, a week ago, ahead of their ahead of the preseason game in Salzburg. You know, I met them at their team hotel, and he was there, took a picture with him. He was lovely and really absolutely nothing wrong with it but that day is apparently when it started that day is apparently when it started because yesterday um i drove to the red bull salzburg versus real madrid game again in salzburg and um i was on the way there then i got a notification and david Luiz refused to drain and is forcing his way to arsenal now and i'm like what on earth is going on surely this cannot be true it came from france the news initially and i was like what what the hell like where 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 on earth would this be coming from and obviously as time went on we realized this is actually true, you know, it, it's actually happening. I mean, it turned out it wasn't true that he refused to train, but, you know, the rest is kind of true. Not necessarily forcing it, his move to Arsenal as such, but in a sense, I guess, kind of, but it's crazy. Like, how has this happened? It's deadline day. It's Premier League deadline day today and bloody frustrating. Like, honestly, guys, you know, as, as I speak, it's 23 minutes to, you know, the transfer window in the Premier League shuts and obviously it will, oh, be unveiled if it isn't, you know, you won't see this video probably. Um, you know, the way it all started, this is what I was told is in that Chelsea 5, Red Bull Salzburg 3 game, you know, the game that just a couple of hours before the game, I actually met him, you know, I met him for the first time that day. And um, that, that, that day is when it started. And it's a bit of a problem. It is a bit of a problem because, you know, in that game, David Ruiz wasn't perfect. He did make a couple of mistakes. He just played that ball out, you know, just completely carelessly for a corner kick when he just tried to play to Aspi across the pitch, I think, you know, while we were trying to play it out from the back and he just, you know, messed it up and put it out for a corner and Salzburg scored their first goal from that. And, um, you know, he had some couple of other mistakes, a few lunges and a few just not perfect positioning. And, you know, I mean, we only conceded one goal in that. I still thought we were better in that game defensively, um, you know, with him and Zuma than we were against Gladbach with Christensen and Zuma because only later when David Luiz had come off, I'm pretty sure, um, did we concede the other two goals against Salzburg. Um, but yeah, after that game, Frank Lampard, apparently, again, this is what I was told, did just want to speak to David Luiz, speak about the mistakes and obviously work on them. You know, it's pre-season. This is when you're, I guess, allowed to make mistakes. You know, this is this is what it's meant to be like. I mean, pretty sure Frank Lampard knows and knew how important David Luiz generally is to our team, but that doesn't mean you can't work on his, you know, defensive problems. And, um, David Luiz apparently didn't react particularly well to it and um, basically just ignored Lampard and basically blamed the other defenders for whatever, um, you know, for, for his mistakes and, and all sorts and just wasn't having it at all. And then in the lead up to the Gladbach game, the training continued as, as, you know, as usual. And Frank Lampard, again, tried to like just work on a few problems that he thought David Luiz had in his game and defensively and whatever. And again, David Luiz wasn't having it, basically. You know, he just wasn't having it at all and again ignored him and apparently even like got aggressive towards Frank Lampard and you know this is then apparently why he didn't start against Gladbach because 
you know, Lampard wasn't having it and saw enough. Like, he was like, well, you're not starting then. It's quite simple. And that apparently then led to a bit of a, you know, bust up, a bit of an argument between David Luiz and the coaching staff once Frank Lampard had left the, the changing room, I guess, once that information was revealed that he wasn't starting. And um, then Lampard, again, you know, just wasn't having it even more so. Like, as training continued after that game, you know, David just didn't accept the fact that he wasn't starting or whatever, even though, you know, at the time, I think it was the same for all of us Chelsea fans. You know, when I saw the lineup against Gladbach, I thought, all right, Luis played 70 minutes against Salzburg. So, you know, that's why he's not starting now. He's 32. And, you know, we give some other, you know, game time to like Christensen and stuff because we know Luis is going to start against United anyway. Lampard is maybe just still deciding to, you know, who's going to play next to him, whether that's Christensen or whether that's Kurt Zuma. Um, and, you know, that, that's what I thought initially when I saw that lineup, when I watched that game, you know, that's what I thought. But apparently, well, it seems to be not not what exactly what was going on. And, you know, you know, problems basically continued and Lampard just wasn't having any of it. And, um, you know, he just like, right, I mean, what, what are you doing? Like, you can't behave like this and basically turn him into a squad player. I said, well, if you're going to be like this, you're not going to stop. Basically said, your behavior is not good enough. Like, if you're not going to listen to me, I'm the boss, I'm the manager. You know, you're going to be a squad player. You're going to be basically first cho uh, fourth choice behind um, Christensen, behind Kurt Zuma, behind Rüdiger. Probably not behind Tomori, but still, you know, fourth choice. And then David Luiz, you know, kicked up a fuss. N not not going to say understandably, but, you know, somewhat understandably. Went to his agent and was like, well, you know, I'm not going to be fourth choice. And um, his agent has his connections to Arsenal. He spoke to Arsenal and then we are where we are, I guess. Because, you know, they sorted that out. And Frank Lambert was like, well, if you want to leave to Arsenal... You're not training with the squad, you know. This is Luis told him that he wants to wants to leave. He wants to join Arsenal, and he told him that. And Lampard said, "Well, then you're not training with the squad." And this is where the whole, you know, bit of news came from. They refused to train because he wasn't part of training. But it wasn't actually him refusing. You know, it was him telling Lampard, "Well, I'm going to leave then." And um, Lampard saying, "Well, then you're not training with the team because it's just a negative influence." So that is that. And um, yeah, now he seems to be on his way to Arsenal for a two-year deal, on a two-year deal, sorry, for a fee of only eight million pounds. Which, considering he you know, David Luiz just signed a two-year contract extension back in May. It's a bit strange because, you know, I guess we broke our internal rule of only giving one-year contracts to 30-plus-year-olds with David Luiz. And then we told him, I mean, usually I'd say, oh, well, actually, that was really smart now because now we could sell him for more money. But 8 million? Like, 8 million? I mean, it doesn't matter in this situation because clearly Frank Lampard wants to get rid of him because clearly Frank Lampard is being very just strong here and brave here as well, in my opinion. And he's like, well, I'm not having this player power crap. You know, if you're not going to listen to me as a manager, I'm, I'm not having it at all. And um, yeah, you know, maybe that's why we're just accepting a low deal because we knew Arsenal are low on funds. You know, they just seem to sign a Kieran Tierney from Celtic as well. And obviously they signed Nicolas Pepe. Um, had a good window, to be fair to them. Um, and it's, you know, we just wanted to get rid, I guess. You know, I was still hoping... For the deal to fall through and him, you know, probably not staying either way, but then leaving abroad and, you know, leaving to another league in Europe or even the MLS or whatever, but just not to Arsenal. But, you know, it seems to be Arsenal and, <coughs> excuse me, it was a very, it's just a frustrating situation because I just don't know what to think of it. I don't know what to think. I mean, obviously, if all of this is true, then David Luiz's behaviour was unacceptable and then I can't put anything on Frank Lampard because initially when I heard all of it, I'm like, you know, it said that, because he was meant to be fourth choice, that's why, you know, he wants to leave now. And there was no explanation why he was out of nowhere fourth choice. And it was just said that that was just Lampard, you know, just favoured the other three. And then I was like, well, what are you doing, Lamps? Like, David Luiz is clearly, like, by far our best centre-back, you know, right now. Before, obviously, he's officially left. Some people might disagree, but this is firmly my opinion. Like, I strongly believe that without him, we have... Big, big defensive problems. Not that we didn't have defensive problems with him either, but much, much bigger. Like, just watch that Gladbach game. There's no balls in that defence now. Like, the, the line was so deep while our midfield was pressing. It doesn't work. You cannot do that. And David Luiz was the one that commanded his back four, you know, to play a much, much higher line, which we needed in the way Lampard wants to play. So, it's important. That doesn't mean that Christensen and Zuma and Rüdiger or whatever can't learn that and can't, you know, make sure that defence keeps a higher line. But against Gladbach, it was a problem. So, I think David Luiz leaving does make us quite significantly you know, we, uh, weakens us quite significantly, to be honest. But if, like, again, all of this is true, it had to be done. It probably had to be done because player power is a thing and Lampard wasn't having any of it. I guess you could say a little bit like, you know, um, 
Sarri wasn't having any from Cahill, but that was just a performance issue. Like He just didn't like him as a player, didn't think he was good enough to play in his system, and then he dropped him. Um, but it's a big move, Frank. It's a big, big move. I mean, I hope this goes well for you. I really do. But um, on David, I mean, I loved him. You know, I mean, he played in Munich, so that's why I'm not going to be one of the guys that just, you know, properly snake on him and call him a snake and hate on him like that. I'm not, I'm not going to be that guy. You can disagree with me, but I'm not going to do that. I don't think that's right. You know, he's done a lot for us. He played with a lot of passion. And I also don't think he was lying. Like, ever since he's returned, he said he loved Chelsea, he had to come back. And, you know, in all of these interviews, and even on the pitch, you saw that he cared. You saw that he played for the badge. You know, so I saw someone say, you play for the badge, not the name on the back. I think that's exactly what David Luiz was doing. Even, in, and again, in another recent interview when he just said, you know, talking about, you know, personal like goals for the season and stuff, he just said the team goes first. Then I can look at myself, but the team success and stuff is is the important thing. I I don't think he was lying about that. I think that is the truth, but I think there might just be an authority problem. And, um, you know, then Frank Lampard had to make that move. I don't know exactly whether, you know, the whole of the rest of the coaching staff or whatever, or Petr Cech or Granovskaya or whoever actually agree with with his decision, but the manager is the manager, the head coach is the head coach. And if he doesn't want a player, you know, there's no point keeping him around because he's just going to be like a bad influence for the whole dressing room. That's just the situation that it is. And, um, you know, the authority problem, did we kind of put that upon ourselves by appointing a manager that, you know, has played with some of our players while he was still, you know, still had a playing career. And that is David Luiz, um, Aspilicueta and William. Did I expect that problem to start with David Luiz? No. Did I, you know, if anyone, I thought it would probably be William because obviously he had issues with Conte as well. But I say that, David Luiz had issues with Conte. And now that I hear, when I heard about that, I was like, maybe this was always a theme for David Luiz. Maybe this was why Mourinho kind of wanted to get rid of him back in 2014 because, you know... That Mourinho likes his defensive stability and um, you know I'm sure he would have he wanted to work on David Luiz's defensive problems which he most certainly had back then you know even more so than now and maybe David Luiz also then didn't listen maybe also then blamed his defenders blamed his teammates or whatever and maybe Mourinho also wasn't having that I, I don't know that for a fact I'm just putting this hypothesis out there I guess and um, we know the problems with Conte we know that 3-0 defeat in Rome when you know him apparently trying to like change something play you know, a different kind of shape of the back three, I guess, different positions in the back three, and Cahill acting as an intermediary, as, you know, the captain, of course, and that led to problems, and then Luis basically didn't play after that again, obviously, he was officially put down to injury, but we all know that wasn't exactly true, so maybe it was always a bit of an authority problem, and then you can't put it down to Frank playing with David Luiz, even though I also heard that they didn't have the greatest relationship when they were players, they didn't hate each other, but apparently they didn't, like, get on particularly well, but that's not necessary. Like, a player doesn't need to, like, love their manager. A player doesn't need to love their teammates. And, you know, I saw someone put on Twitter, where, like, you know, when Yossi ben stopped, um, you know, David Luiz continuing an argument with Frank Lampard after the game. That's normal. Like, players in the team argue. Like, Costa and Oscar were great friends. And still, they had, like, a buster where, like, they almost tried to kill each other once in training. It happens. You know, it's just emotions fly high. The, the one thing doesn't necessarily have to do anything with the other thing, if that makes sense. But maybe it is an issue and... Again, if all of this is true, it was the best decision. Like it had, it is a decision that had to be made for David Luiz to leave Chelsea. As much as it pains me, and as much as I think it makes our season a tricky season, an even trickier season than I already thought it would be. Like you know, if you have my prediction, I thought we'd finish somewhere between sixth and eighth. Then preseason made me like be a bit, little bit more optimistic because I liked a lot of what I saw and said maybe more like fifth to seventh. But now I'm definitely back to sixth to eighth and maybe even 6th to ninth, like, things could go badly. Like, if I just think back to that Gladbach game, like, I don't even want to think how the season will go if Zuma and Christensen and Rüdiger don't, like, improve. Because Rüdiger, to me, he is a very good defender. You know, some people don't rate him, some people really rate him. It's a very, Rüdiger is a really interesting one in that case. But I always thought he was at his best when he was next to Luis because that Rüdiger's positioning isn't always great. He's as rash as David Luiz, but... First of all, that was always, always a bit of a problem. They were both a bit rash. Thankfully, most of the time, one of them stayed because they both still have a bit of a brain. Um, but I felt without Luis, he didn't have the positioning. Like, he needed Luis as the commander next to him. And I just I just think we're lacking that. Like, performance-wise, unless we make Aspilicueta into a centre-back now, which I do think he's a little bit short for, um, you know, once Reese James is back fit, he should replace Aspilicueta because Aspilicueta at right-back, you know, in an attacking formation, in an attacking system, really isn't, the thing like really isn't and then 
we don't have like we already struggle for leaders who is our leader then like seriously who is our leader then like Jorginho is a very vocal player but he's only been here for a year for a season like you know I mean yes he's a leader and you know he acts vocally on the pitch and that is good and he's very much so commands a midfield around and then you have N'Golo Conte but he's definitely not a leader as such he's a leader by example for sure but he's the least vocal player probably that we have in the entire squad and Kovacic yeah he has experience we've been in the Champions League three times but that was three times off the bench so you know what I mean guys it's a difficult situation it's just it's just tough I mean again don't take what I said as a complete guarantee um, I might hear other things later on and then I might make another video I might make another live stream about it but pff, it's hard guys it's hard and um, it hurts and Arsenal are getting a good player and it's frustrating that he also wanted to stay within the Premier League I get it though he has his restaurant here and also already getting like quite funny trip advice and reviews on this restaurant which the, the poor manager of the restaurant I've been to the restaurant it's quite nice actually and the manager is really nice but um, <laughs> quite funny I have to say but again stop the hate he played in Munich I know just playing in Munich doesn't give you an excuse and a pass for everything but it gives you an excuse and a pass for a few things because you know it was the greatest night in the history of a football club and he was a part of it and he played through an injury that night you know as well as did Gary Cahill so you know, I think we have to cut him a little bit of slack. And I know it's not the same situation as Petr Cech. Of course it isn't, um, especially with his behaviour. Again, if what I said is true. But couldn't you have left to, like, I don't know, AC Milan or Benfica because apparently he wants to go back to Benfica one day anyway. I don't know, somewhere else in Spain or whatever, just somewhere. Couldn't you have not stayed in London? That makes it a bit harsh because Arsenal needed a defender. Yes, you know, Luis defending can sometimes be a little bit comical, like, you know, when we lost 3-1 away at Spurs. You know, that defending against Human Son wasn't great. But he's so important, he was so important to us, and he will be important to, you know, to Arsenal's game. And I think he will improve Arsenal quite drastically, and it hurts. But Frank Lampard, fair play. You know, you made the brave decision, you took that brave decision, and fair play to sticking with it. Um, you know, multiple managers at Chelsea have suffered from player power, and maybe this kind of move will stop that kind of problem will stop player power and um, if so fair enough I guess if so fair enough but I am kind of dreading the season a little bit now if I'm going to be honest but yeah guys I'm going to leave it here I think this video is quite long as it is anyway um, I'm going to leave it here and um, thank you guys for watching you know like I said you know do subscribe if you haven't already let's you know just keep it growing let's hit the 6,000 subscribers soon drop a like on this video if you enjoyed it um, leave me your thoughts on the situation and also tomorrow on Friday I will make my first you know video first soul video like video on my own on blues tv obviously on the channel that i'm now a part of um you know i will make my first video on there tomorrow which will be the manchester united versus chelsea preview so i do hope you're looking forward to that we'll put the link down in the description so if you haven't already please head over to blues tv and subscribe um that would be massively appreciated but yeah thank you guys for watching up the chels it's up to numbers you know if it's true you know you have to side with frank lampard you cannot side with david Luiz here at all and um yeah thank you guys for watching up the chels and i'll see you when I see you.